Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the ECMWF ensembles, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run as well. Now we're going to be starting this next working week very mild with southwesterly winds but we'll be ending it with really quite chilly northerly winds. There's a real polar air mass does take control over pretty much the whole of the British Isles and it will mean temperatures are really quite chilly later this coming week. So if you do remember if you enjoyed my videos make sure you like and subscribe and do remember to follow on Twitter as well the links in the description. So if we do run through the latest GFS, you can see at the moment we're in between weather systems. We've got reasonably high pressure over the top of us, so it has been reasonably dry. However, you can see low pressure out of the Atlantic gathering steam, ready to start to push towards the UK through Sunday into Monday. You can see its weather fronts will be arriving through Monday with much warmer air. Where we do see some dry weather at times, some cloud breaks, we could be seeing maybe 18, 19 or even 20 degrees. However... For the majority, it's going to be cloudy with a lot of rain around, some stronger winds as well. Um, so it's not going to be feeling particularly warm for all. However, that low eventually does clear. And as it does, it opens the floodgates to the Arctic. You can see the minus five ice firm moves through the whole of Scotland, getting towards northern England. And we do get the zero degree ice firm through the whole British Isles, which is um, pretty chilly air. Now, of course, it is end of October, so it isn't that much cold air above the North Pole at this stage, um, but it still is a reasonably cold air mass, and we'll see with the ensembles at the, uh, towards the end of the video how it is a good sort of five, six, seven degrees below average for this time of year. Beyond that, we do see low pressure come back in off the Atlantic, and then we're sort of in between weather systems trying to build up pr pressure from the south, but still got low pressure rumbling in off the Atlantic, and we continue with this sort of in between weather systems, and right towards the end of the run, we're starting to pull once again another northerly wind ahead of another low pressure system. In this sort of scenario, we could be even seeing some quite heavy snowfall over Scottish mountains with this low pressure system sliding into that colder air. Very interesting pattern with this sort of southerly tracking jet stream, northwest southeast alignment. And in this scenario, we could be seeing some very interesting conditions if this sort of setup does come about in December, January, February, as it could be a real snowmaker. But for now, it is just generally quite chilly um, and potentially unsettled for Halloween um, into the 1st of November. If we do now have a look at the GM, see how that's compared. Again, in between weather systems at the moment, but low pressure is going to be arriving early next week. And we're going to see that low move through. Then we go into that northerly wind with pretty chilly air taking control for the majority of the country. Not getting quite as far through um, that colder air as on the GFS, but still a chilly air mass. Beyond that, we do see low pressure come back in off the Atlantic. And again, with this sort of in-between weather system, with high pressure trying to build up from the south, low pressure in the north. And it's where we could see some drier, finer conditions further southwards, but wetter, windier conditions further northwards as well. If we do have a look at the pressure charts, you can see there is a ridge trying to build up towards Greenland. And if this did come off, we could start to veer the north winds back into the north. I have to hold this low pressure out towards northern Canada at bay, but we'll have to keep an eye, of course, beyond day 10. As you can see, the GFS did build that bit of amplification. We did see that northwest-southeast alignment of the jet, um, and in that scenario, we would be going a little bit colder um, for the end of the month. So if you do have a look at the ECMWF, you can see at the moment, again, in between weather systems, high pressure, um, uh, sort of a weak area of high pressure in control, low pressure arriving from the Atlantic, and then we go into that northerly wind, for the end of the week really quite chilly with the colder air moving through could be some very heavy snowfall towards scandinavia you can see some very warm air coming up from the south combining with this arctic air along those cold fronts um, or along those weather fronts in general there will be some very heavy rain and some potentially some very heavy snow as well beyond that low pressure comes back in off the atlantic and towards day 10 we see more amplification of the jet stream and we could be going back into a northerly wind now it doesn't look it's a transient ridge so potentially only again another one or two days sort of northerly spell but we could once again get cold fronts through the country um, with chilly polar air returning if we do now have a look at the ecmwf ensembles to just see what we're going to be seeing over the next few weeks now if we go to five days out you can see the northerly wind that's heading out towards the end of this coming week 
all generally showing very similar pattern, all slightly different in terms of the exact nature of the northerly, but it all sh is all showing a polar air mass, um, just quite, quite how cold it gets is the uncertainty at this stage. If we move out to seven days out, 168 hours, you can see, again, a little bit more uncertainty. You can see 43% low pressure to the east, a bit of a transient ridge in the west, cool at northwesterly winds, but still um, reason, reasonably sort of jet stream oriented. And that high pressure not getting quite far um, northwards. You can see 11, similar pattern, but more low pressure dominated with high pressure sinking southwards. Seven, just with a straight flat jet stream. Um, six with a more direct northerly with more high pressure towards Greenland and again another five with a similar pattern but more low pressure trying to break in off the Atlantic so a lot of uncertainty really in the longer term but all generally showing this sort of jet stream um, being amplified you can see towards day 10 we have this sort of northwest southeast alignment of the jets with those winds coming in from south Greenland um, you can see that on these two uh, favoured runs the control operation will have a bit more of a westerly a bit more of a flat westerly but you can see that ridge trying to build up towards Greenland um, these 16 have a little bit more orientated to northwest and then we can see seven with mid-atlantic um, ridges building up towards Greenland and that would be pulling a northerly wind so a lot colder there if we run all the way out to the end of the run, 360 hours, you can see a little bit more muddled. We've got 14 with low pressure, south or westerly winds, um, really unsettled. We've got 12 with, again, westerly winds, real mixed sort of message there. Um, again, a lot of uncertainty. Another 10 with high pressure up towards Greenland, northerly winds. Another 9 really in between systems, don't really know what's going on there, not too many strong signals. And then another 6 with low pressure to our north and our east, probably pulling in a cooler northerly airflow. So all showing slightly different things in the longer term, but still having the jet stream involved with this amplification. No massive blocking at this stage, but still these ridges building up towards Greenland and in the mid-Atlantic, meaning at times we're going to be seeing some northerly winds, but at other times we're going to be seeing westerly, flat westerly, unsettled um, conditions. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles for temperature uh, at 850 HPA and precipitation, you can see generally at the moment we're above average and it's going to continue rising as that low pressure does arrive. We have a lot of precipitation around, but then the temperature really does drop a good 10, 12, maybe even 15 degrees in a few spots, all the way down to about minus three, minus four as that cold air mass comes through later next week. Temperatures do rise to around or just below average um, for the last, uh, for the what? in about 10 days time and then generally a lot of uncertainty some going much cooler some going much milder still quite a lot of precipitation signals so it is really quite uncertain if we have a look at the sea level pressure you can see at the moment it's sort of a weak air of high pressure low pressure arriving towards the end of the coming week um or the coming working week then high pressure builds it back up again because it's a transit ridge before pressure drops again and then we see a lot more uncertainty build in um as uh, as the month comes to a close um so it's looking very interesting halloween at this stage is a bit uncertain what we're going to be seeing but there is the potential for it being quite cold and chilly but at the same time there's the potential for, for it being um wet and unsettled and you can't rule out potentially even in the south seeing a bit of high pressure building up which would uh, potentially turn things a little bit dry but at this stage there's no real prominent signal if we have a look at glasgow you can see again, very similar to London in terms of weak high pressure at the moment, dropping to low pressure, then quite strong low pressure comes through later this coming uh, or early this week into the middle of the week. Then we see a build of pressure back up again and then it drops down to sort of in between as we do see a lot of uncertainty come in um, as we head towards the last uh, few or the last sort of five, six days of the month. If we look look at 850 HP temperature and precipitation, again, similar trend to London, warm at the moment, a lot more precipitation though, because further northwards and we don't quite have as much high pressure in control. So precipitation coming over the next few days as weather fronts arrive, then a big drop of around 15 degrees at 850 HPA, um, down to around minus four, maybe minus five degrees at 850 HPA, and then it returns to around or just below average. And then there's a lot of uncertainty throughout the last four or five days of October. A lot of precipitation around. Um, and that's not really too unexpected for autumn in Scotland. Um, so it's not looking particularly pleasant for the last 10 days. But there is still subject to change. Because, of course, you can see the amount of scatter that there is beyond sort of the 24th, 25th. Um, and we'll just have to keep an eye really on what happens. 
So we do have a look at the UK Met Office run. Um, you can see we do have approaching weather fronts in the north at the moment, and those are going to start to move eastwards, but weakening as it comes up against the higher pressure. Still could see some rain um, in the Midlands, Northern England, Scotland as well. And then through Sunday afternoon, maybe some drizzly showers and a few showers elsewhere. As we head through to Monday, you can see the approaching low from the southwest, seeing rain pushing in a weaker front initially, before we see heavier bands of rain through Monday night into Tuesday, and just periods of heavy rain at times, and even some very heavy rain moving into the south as well. All areas seeing some heavy rain at times, and as we head to, uh, to, towards the middle of the week, you can see rain towards the south, but you see the winds veer to a northerly, and you can even see the potential for a bit of snow over the Scottish mountains. We see that northerly wind move in, and that weather front does move southwards as that cold air does sink. And you can see there are some snow um, little patches coming on some of these showers over the Scottish mountains, so we can't rule that out for the end of this working week. If we do have a look at temperature, you can see this afternoon got to around sort of 15, 16 degrees in a few areas in the south, but much colder in the north. Uh, for, through Sunday, as the warm air starts to start push up from the southwest, maybe 17 or 18 degrees in the south, and by Monday, we could be seeing maybe 17, 18, 19 degrees. A little bit chilly still in the north, but getting into double digits, maybe even 14, 15 degrees in a few spots in Scotland. By Tuesday, most areas are a lot milder, maybe 20 degrees is possible in the North Midlands, into East Anglia, um, uh, but there is going to be rain around. When we do see that rain, it's not going to be feeling pretty pleasant. Only maybe 12, 13, 14 degrees, but that's a little bit warmer than we've seen recently. And then through Wednesday night, you can see temperatures maybe 14, 15 degrees in East Anglia. However, that cold front really does sweep through for Thursday. And you can see by Thursday afternoon, two or three degrees across Scotland, widely mid single digits, maybe only six, seven, eight degrees in the south, maybe 10, 11, 12 degrees where we do avoid the coldest air. But you can see much, much colder signal, a good 10 degrees drop in only about three, two or three days on this UK mass office run as that cold front does sink southwards. And remember, this isn't particularly potent cold air. Um, it's just pretty chilly for this time of year simply because there isn't that much available cold air to our north. So you've got to take that all into perspective and keep an eye on what's going to happen over the coming weeks and the coming months. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.